Welcome to my new calculus channel. I am John Gabriel. In this particular video, we'll be looking at the ignorance and stu stupidity of modern academics. Um, it's going to be a fun video because of the really silly things that are said by modern academics. And uh, it's going to be the first in a part of a series of such videos. So uh, I'm going to start with one of my favorite academics. His name is Professor Jack Hazinger, and I've chosen to put him at the top of my skewer list because one of his comments on that trashy site, Quora, uh, really, really took a good dig at me, and so I'd like to basically start with Jackie. Uh, look, look at his photograph there. He's kind of a cute little professor, isn't he? And uh, so anyway, w you can read the you can read the comment that he wrote there if you visit Quora. I'm not a member of Quora, but I'll also upload this document or a link to this uh, uh, thread on my YouTube so you can see what he wrote. And not to, to spend too much time on what he wrote because most of it is a bunch of rubbish which is completely untrue and shows a lack of diligence on his part in studying the new calculus first before writing up a crit you know a critique which is entirely false and doesn't do any justice and serves no good purpose whatsoever so <coughs> i did actually write up a r retort to Jackie's comment on Quora, and here it is. The link is right at the top here, but I'll provide a link to it also in the YouTube comment section. And here I dissect everything Professor Jack Hazinger has to say, and uh, I don't pull my punches, as you can see. I'm quite brutal in my approach, but uh, I refuse to be soft on academics who don't think about what they say and this is just something that has to be done unfortunately so Professor Jack Hazinger had a lot to say about new calculus but the funniest thing is that he simply did not understand that the derivative of sine x is always cos x okay regardless of what x is whether x is stated in degrees or radians, uh, the derivative is always cos x. Okay? So, um, and, and, and the misunderstanding that comes from this is a result of the obfuscated limit theory, which is so full of rubbish that modern academics have gotten themselves into a tailspin about it. Uh, what I'd like to say now is that um, this particular statement of his shows a, a grand ignorance um, on the part of a professor of mathematics. Uh, you know, for somebody to say that the derivative of sine x is not always cos x is really a very dumb thing to say. And I'll explain why in, in, in a short while. But this is what I'm going to be skewering Professor Jack Hazinga about today. And I'm also going to be skewering uh, David Joyce, who has his own site on Euclid's elements, but not about the elements, about the same problem, because David Joyce seems to think that the derivative of sine x is not always cos x. Uh, in addition, I will be <coughs> taking a poke, another poke at my favorite friend, Anders Kaysork, who is uh, a graduate of MIT. Okay, so let's get started. So... What is what is the the quotient the, uh, the 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 ratio this particular ratio here What does this mean Let's just pull up a paintbrush uh, document here and evaluate very quickly what this means So if we write down <coughs> sine of x divided by x What does that mean um, the first, the first question I'd like to ask is this. Is it possible for x? Is it possible for x to be 
anything else, to be anything else besides radiance. Just think about that for a moment. Is it possible for X to be anything else besides radiance? Radians are circular measure, in other words, angular measure done in terms of the circumference of the circle. Um, so, is it possible, for example, for X to be degrees? What do you think? Is it? Well, okay, the answer is, it's not possible for X to be degrees. The sine function here only takes arguments which are of type radian. Okay, so you may you may jump up and down now and scream and shout at me and say, "Oh well, we've always put degrees in there and it works." Well, I have news for you. If you put degrees into this function before it can be evaluated, those degrees are converted into radians in a very simple way. So, say for example, you have uh, 35 degrees, okay, and you want to find out what the sine of 35 degrees is. The way you will do it is as follows. You will say, well, 180 degrees is the same as pi, isn't it? Therefore, 35 degrees will be 35 divided by 180 times pi, right? Radians. So now we've converted 35 degrees into radians. It is this value which goes into x. Okay, And if you're looking at the first principles method, the first principles method where you take the limit of this as x goes to 0, x must in both cases be the same thing. So if it's radians here, it also has to be radians here. There is no situation where x can be anything else but radians. Okay, so the stupidity of these three mathematicians, the first one is Jack Hazinger, the second one is David Joyce, and the third one is Anders K. Sork, is exposed in this video. So now, let's go ahead and look at the silly things, in fact, the very idiotic things they have to say. So if we go to the first file here, the question was asked at Quora by presumably some undergraduate or somebody who doesn't really know much about trigonometry or, or calculus. The derivative of sine x equals cos x only when x is expressed in radians. Is that true and why? Um, well, actually it's false because the derivative of sine x always equals to cos x whether x is expressed in radians or otherwise. The function sine x always takes radians. Okay, so if you look at this document here of how Newton derived the sine x series, he did it without calculus, by the way, you will see that there is no way that that particular sine series can work, and this is quite a long document, it's about 11 pages, there's no way that the sine series can work unless x is measured in radians. So ultimately, if you specify x in terms of degrees, it must be converted into radians. Does that make sense? Okay, this document here will show you how the entire series is derived. So, um, if you take a look, if you read through this document and study it, you'll understand once and for all that the sine series only takes radians as an argument. It doesn't take degrees. I will put a link to this article at my YouTube site. So let's go further down in this document and see some, some of the stupid things that have been said. Well, k -Sorg just goes on to talk about completely irrelevant nonsense in his comment, um, especially in this paragraph here, which you can read for yourself. Um, then then further down, uh, we have a comment here by David Joyce, who's a professor of mathematics at Clark University. Let's look at the, the rubbish that he wrote. Well, he gets down 
to this particular point and he says, in order for the limit to be 1 we require that sine h must be about the same as h for small angles h. You see, so again he is fixated on the limit concept. And that, that fixation has actually blinded David Joyce. Not only David Joyce, but just about every other ac academic. Um, so that they begin to say stupid things like you're about to see in the next paragraph. That doesn't happen for degrees. And he says sine 1 degrees is about 0 0.01745, which is not at all close to 1. Well, guess what he did there? He actually calculated sine 1 degrees using radians, not degrees, and then he divided it by degrees, which is a 4 pa. No, 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 no. You do not divide it by degrees. It has to be divided by radians. So he continues to give a whole little rant here about, you know, why the derivative of sine x is only cos x when x is radians. Well, x is that's nonsense because x is always radians. Even if we state it in degrees, it first gets converted to radians. So there are several other comments, and you'll notice one from another so-called IMO gold medalist, Putnam fellow David Ash, a complete fool. Another one by a Quora user, who's also a math professor at University of Illinois. Another one by a PhD student, very stupid Chinese student, Alan Guo. Another one by Bob Weaver, a retired teacher of mathematics and computer science, and a musician and composer. <laughs> okay, so that's all really very amusing because it just makes you think, well, if these people are authorities on the subject and they make such a simple blunder, how can you believe or how can you trust anything else they say? You simply can't. Okay, so... Let's go back here again and get rid of this. And <coughs> so we looked at this document here with Professor Jack Hazinger making a fool of himself. And also this document. And just as, as a final thing here before, uh, oops, before we conclude this. Oh, let's do this. Okay. When we write sine, oh, let's get a pen. When we write sine x over x, this is in fact, this here is in fact a ratio over a ratio. It's a ratio over a ratio. Well, why do I say that? Think about it. If you calculate sine x using Newton series, you will get a ratio because it's always an approximation, right? So whatever ratio you get will come to the top of the vinculum here. And then x is also a ratio because it's the circular measure. If you have an angle and you have circular measure like that, so let's suppose that this is x here and we're measuring x in terms of radians, then it'll be the length of this arc, let's call it L, over the length of the radius, let's call it r. So x is in fact here going to be equal to l divided by r. And whatever comes on top here is going to be the approximation that one obtains from the sine series. Yes? So sine x over x is actually a ratio over a ratio. And whatever x is here, it must be here too if you're looking at the limit as x approaches 0. Yeah, because you can't be looking at one x which is radians and another x which is degrees. Okay, so this x must always be radians. So this x cannot be degrees because it doesn't make sense to divide radians by degrees, does it? Absolutely, that's exactly what I thought. So, mathematicians are really a bunch of idiots, and they deserve to be skewered, and that's going to be my job in this series of videos. I'm going to be a little confrontational, and I'm going to be brutally forthright and honest with you. So, I hope you've learned something from this YouTube video, and more than anything else, I hope you'll, you, you'll, you'll be stimulated to study these things, think about them for yourself, and 
learn some uh, new knowledge that you never knew before. This is the New Calculus Channel. I am John Gabriel, and I hope you'll join me again next time.